pre-Mendelian concepts. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the genetic concepts of pre-Mendelian era. You and your parents arrive at a family gathering. You receive warm greetings from your aunt, uncle, cousins and others. Suddenly, a hoary voice of your grandmother pops out saying, Hi dear, how are you? I am very happy to see you after a long time. You look very much like your father. Immediately, other family members agree with your granny and mumble the same. Being educated, you may be aware of the reason behind this striking similarity. But it was a different scenario during the ancient times when people believed that a child is a gift from God if the child resembles the characters of his or her parents. People even believed that some parents used mystic techniques to transfer their characters to their child. However, few groups of people were against the belief that a child was gifted by God. In alignment with these progressive thoughts, renowned scholars and philosophers proposed various viewpoints regarding the formation of a child and the similarity between a child and his or her parents. Among those scholars, the first was the Greek philosopher Pythagoras, a famous mathematician renowned for his Pythagoras theorem. He suggested that during coitus, every part of an individual's body releases some type of vapours which is responsible for the formation of a new embryo. This theory was coined as the moist vapour theory. In 400 BC, Hippocrates, regarded as the father of epidemiology, proposed that every individual part of a human body produced reproductive materials that are responsible for transferring the characters from parents to their offspring. Further around this time, Empedocles, a Greek philosopher, proposed the fluid theory which stated that the fluid from various parts of the parent's body mixed together to form an embryo. He also suggested that improper mixing of these bodily fluids may lead to the absence of few parental characters in a child. In 350 BC, Aristotle proposed the reproductive blood theory. This theory suggested that the male reproductive blood contained vital nutrients from all parts of the body and was said to be pure while the female produce blood that is considered to be impure. The theory further advocated that the male and female blood coagulated to produce an embryo wherein the male characters were expressed more owing to the purity of the male reproductive blood. Centuries passed by and in the year 1628, William Harvey described about the circulation of blood throughout the body. He also theorized that the animals developed from eggs and semen. Unfortunately, he was unable to prove the same. Later, in 1672, Anton van Leeuwenhoek discovered the existence of microscopic life. He also revealed the presence of sperm cells and their association with the eggs. However, in the year 1679, Jan Swamadam proposed the preformation theory that suggested that the sperms and eggs consisted of minute organisms called homunculus, which required stimulation for the growth of the embryo. This theory was also supported by two other scientists named. Dale Patias and Hartusecker. After the preformation theory, a set of basic features of inheritance was suggested by three different scientists, namely Joseph Kotteb Kolreiter, John Goss, and Charles Norton between 1760 and 1865, which was considered to be a milestone in the history of genetics. In 1868, Charles Darwin proposed the theory of pangenesis. In his theory, Darwin stated that all the cells of an organism had the ability to shed tiny particles called 
gemules which are capable of mixing throughout the body and finally accumulate in the gonads these particles were passed on to the next generation so that the characters from the parents were transferred to their offspring further he also suggested that if the cells of the parents were influenced by environmental factors they would transmit the adapted gemules to their offspring in 1888 febris ro supported the preformation theory but it was rejected by k f wolf who proposed the theory of epigenesis the theory of epigenesis postulated that the gametes contained identical living substances which had the capacity to form an organized body structure after fertilization in 1892 august weismann proposed the theory of germplasm to explain heredity he stated that body tissues were of two types that is germplasm and somatoplasm germ cells transferred heritable information from one generation to another generation while the somatic cells carried out the normal body functions for his experiment he cut the tails of rats and crossed them to his surprise he noticed that the offspring were born with tails he repeated the experiment several times and found that the offspring were tailed rats thus wiseman along with francis galton a british science writer disproved the theory of pangenesis although various theories were proposed by many scientists gregor john mendel is regarded as the father of genetics because he proposed the genetic theories in the year 1868 he experimented with pea plants and proposed the fundamental theory of heredity which included law of segregation law of independent assortment and law of dominance however he was unable to provide justification for his theories thus his theories received recognition only during the 19th century from then his findings have served as a road map for various geneticists summary let us do a recap of what we have learned so far the ancient people believed that a child is a gift from god that resembles his or her parents william harvey theorized that animals developed from eggs and semen august weismann stated that the body tissues were of two types that is germplasm and somatoplasm gregor mendel proposed the fundamental theory of genetics and he is known as the father of genetics